Okay, hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining so far. So um, you have Neve and Matt here from our customer success team. Some of you may know us already. If not, it's lovely to meet you. Um, and hopefully we get to work with each other very closely going forward. And today we're super excited about this webinar simply because it's such an important topic at the moment. Um, you know, now more than ever, your brand is so, so crucial to ensure that you have that loyalty with your clients um, you know, that great re reputation and making sure that you can just encourage more kind of, I guess, lead acquisition and while ongoing kind of maintaining your own community and expanding that and scaling that. Um, we do have quite a lot to run through today. So with that, I'll hand you over to Matt, who's going to run through our agenda and then we can get this started. So thank you so much. Thanks, Neve. Yeah, so I'm just going to quickly run over kind of what we're going to touch on today. Um, you know, there's a few areas that we're going to look at kind of focusing mainly on how to how to build a successful brand. And then once you've kind of built that successful brand, then we're going to dive into kind of how you're going to promote that, um, you know, so to so to gain the most out of the, the branding that you've just done. Uh, we'll just kind of look into the basics of first why branding is important. Think about the company mission and the tone of voice that you use while, uh, you know, conversing with your clients day to day. Uh, the visual identity, uh, choosing the right types of imagery and as well as branding your Glowfox products. So. Um, then finally, we'll then kind of looking at how to build that community, promoting that brand through social media, uh, the importance of ads, and then we'll just briefly touch on the lead capture form as kind of as a, as a flow overall, you know, as if we're building the right brand and we're promoting it successfully, that lead capture form then is even more powerful because it's in front of people. And, and if everything's easy to do, you're going to uh, naturally just have more people signing up to share interest. And then we'll quickly just dive into the resources that we avail have available here, um, you know, for you to help with this. We have tons of webinars and uh, knowledge based articles that dive quite deeply into these th topics. Um, and then obviously, as always, if, if you have questions throughout, don't hesitate to ask them. And um, we'll definitely have some time at the end to, to run through some of those, too. Uh, or if in the moment it, it makes sense, we can answer it then. But I'm just going to pass back to Neve now, who's going to touch base on, on the branding. Great, thank you so much, Matt. Um, yeah, so again, I guess the main reason why we wanted to bring everybody's attention to branding is because at this moment, you know, uh, an awful lot of clients are an awful lot of customers, excuse me, you know, while brand was so important before, some have found themselves kind of into that industry where they're running both a hybrid kind of schedule of both online and um, in studio classes. So while in studio classes anyway, you know, it, it's all about sometimes word of mouth, which again is so heavily reliant on your brand and everything that you stand for. for. But I guess as some customers kind of enter online, you're kind of dealing with a more kind of massive arena of let's say online content and um, competitive kind of clients there in terms of who are providing online uh, fitness classes so you know uh, that's where I guess it is really really crucial that you know a if your brand's new into this business and into this industry and um, that you really just have those core values locked down Im immediately so that's understanding you know the direction of your business where you want to go how you want to present yourself as, um, you know, as a, I guess, a service provider to a certain degree and what kind of, I guess, content that you will be sharing with your clients and why you want them to buy into you. Um, it's also so important to have a really sturdy and, uh, I guess, well-represented brand because it will be used to compare yourself to other clients and to other kind of uh, people within the industry so it is going to set you apart from some of your kind of from uh, your competition so you want to make sure that everything that's involved in terms of your like as, as Matt is going to go through you know the tone that you use the the visual imagery that you use you want to make sure that that is kind of always at least one step ahead or at least massively compares you or differentiates you from your competition um, as we all know, uh, brands is going to be the one thing that let's say your clients or, or at least potential leads are going to um, be familiar with. So they're going to associate you with that brand, the service that you provide. So it's going to be that element of recognition of who you are. So again, you want to make sure that everything that you put into that brand as in, again, the message, why you're kind of, um, I guess, setting up as a business, you want to make sure that it stands for everything that you want it to stand for because it will be that, um, that I guess, beacon of, of what clients will uh, associate you as. Um, consistency, I think this is definitely one um, to think about. So this is kind of, I guess, if it's a case that you are, are already a well-established um, 
business you may want to kind of run through a little bit of you know a brand change or a brand enhancement I guess we wouldn't recommend changing your brand so much so that it completely differs um but still make it I guess still ensure that the voice that you are delivering is still consistent so again making sure that the mission and the reason why you started your business is still consistent um and that's going to be throughout every mean of communication so be it on social media be it on emails the way you talk to your clients in person, just keeping that consistency. I know um, Matt and I, there's a, a certain taxi company here in, in Dublin in Ireland and they've changed their brand uh, so many times that right now I don't even know what to call them. I'd call them an old brand name, for example. So changing it regularly um, it isn't recommended because you're losing, I guess, that authenticity that you would have initially had with that initial brand. So again, it's just making sure that once you already have that brand in place to try and keep that and just scale it as opposed to change it massively um with that and you know if you have built that consistency there um you know there is only going to be i guess two massive kind of i guess positive outcomes from that where you will be building you know a trust in that brand you know having that level of consistency shows that you know that you guys are determined that you've maintained everything that you've kept to your word and that what you said you have um or what, what you said that you want to achieve, that you have achieved that and you're going to continue to do so as well. So with that, again, by, 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 able to, by, by being consistent with your own mission statement, um, you will be building out an entire community there and introducing that loyalty. Um, you know, definitely there are going to be some clients that if they're familiar with your brand, you know, they've kept with you from the get go, they're definitely going to stick with you. And in the exact same effect, you know, if somebody's brand new, and I know that that brand has been around for a very long time, I know that they're long standing. And again, they're going to be a little bit more of an attractive brand uh, and business to buy into. So with that, I think if you have joined any of our um, webinars before, uh, something that I'm, I guess, a massive advocate for and kind of introducing that little bit of self-reflection is, okay, what is it that I want to achieve with this business? Why did I even want to start this in the first place? And while it may seem such a trivial thing to think about, it should be the core element in any kind of action that you do take into effect with your business. So that's going to be how you contact your clients, how you communicate with them, the messages that you send out on all platforms again. So, you know, if it's a case that you're intention is to make people you know healthier then you know have that as a core underlining tone in everything that you do if it's all about building a community and you know making sure that people have as much support offering that and making sure that that is known throughout all of your communications so again you know just think about what does your company do and why does your company do it so have those two questions in mind in any action that you do take um, and I guess with that you will start to develop the tone of your brand and you know again the type of language and, and, and communication style that you want to have i mean if you're an outgoing you know bubbly person and you are you know that's what you are like it whenever somebody's interested and you're speaking to them one to one if you then send out monotone very bland communications it, it might not have a massive like detrimental impact, but it's definitely going to be noticed if it's the case that your messaging um, reflects your kind of own personal tone. So just those little things will just enhance your brand that little bit more and bring it to the next step where you can actually scale that effectively. Um, so these are some of the things that like we have noticed, and I know that Matt's gonna uh, go through a really interesting piece just about the visuals. Um, but uh, yeah, so again, whenever, if it's even just creating like little blurbs on your website and you're trying to get those like, uh, you know, I guess quick sentences in place to make sure that it's captivating, don't just stop there. Make sure that you have that a part of your SMSs, right? Your push notifications, your automated messaging. There's an entire kind of, I guess, section in Glowfox um, that releases kind of automated messages under certain conditions. And they all come with, let's say, you know, pre existing kind of uh, um, content there. For me, whenever I'm, you know, onboarding a customer or looking at how a customer can uh, enhance the brand, they're one of the first things that I go to. And it's, while it may seem, again, something simple, but that simple is going to be so much more, it's going to have such a more like a grander impact on how your uh, clients receive those messages. So changing those type of, land, uh, I guess, communications is going to have such a, a more positive impact on your brand. So 
with that again I'm going to pass you over to Matt who's going to go through a really interesting element around the visual imagery sometimes that's usually the first thing that people kind of see so it's definitely one to take note of thanks Matt yeah, definitely. And what do we kind of mean when we say what is your visual identity? There's there's tons of tons of areas that you can look at, you know, from your your images that you use it on social media for for sharing for from the images that you use on your apps on Glowfox that your users book with daily um, to, to just general branding and imaging on your website or, or on the app itself. So, you know, what is your visual identity? You know, you might want to ask yourself a few questions when, you, when you're looking at this. Will will it be appealing to my target clients? You know, if you if something's not appealing to those that you're you're kind of targeting, it's 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 built to fail. So you really want to make sure that your everything is nice to look at. Essentially, um, how will this make your clients feel? You, you don't you don't want them going to a website and being inundated with you know tons and tons of options and having to go through them all. It's just overwhelming. So you want it to be clean and clear and, and very obvious call to action so that it's easy as possible for the user. Um, does it align with the why behind your business? Um, and does it match again your, your brand's personality and tone? So color, color and tone are things that do kind of you know come hand in hand and they work really nicely together. Um, so what we'll kind of touch on now is just a few of these in Glowfox and where you can kind of make the start start off with developing your own uh, visual identity. So passion fitness is just a a staging or, or test branch here that we use at Glowfox. Um, you know we typically suggest using kind of three colors and, and not got not going further than that and um, the reason for that is you know again you don't want to overwhelm people with too much stuff if there's too much color contrast like it's just not nice to look at and, and people will end up like being deterred and, and that might be someone you've lost purely because the website wasn't suited to them and, and they didn't like it and um, so they left uh, the other the other thing to look at there is kind of font as well. What fonts to use? Uh, typically, again, sticking to a maximum on your website of, of kind of three. And typically with that, it's kind of one font and then using bold and italics if you're trying to highlight certain things. But, you know, tr don't, you know, have different fonts on different pages. It makes it look different. It, it's not the same brand. And it feels like each page you're going to is just getting... Um, further and further from where they want to be. Uh, so yeah, then straight on Glowfox as well, you'll notice with your website integration, you do get those three kind of options to set the colors of the, the integration itself. Um, again, like keeping these quite simple, I always say, you know, for that background color, you want something that's easy to read. That's the basis of everything. If that color there where it's white is, you know, red or, or, or blue or something like that, it's going to be really hard for anyone to read it. So keep it clear and um, have use the colors in the sense that they're highlighting the actions rather than the background color itself. And um, so here in this case, simple, just have the highlights on your um, on the top and then black uh, black text as well, just for the outline. So it's really clear, easy. It's very obvious what they have to do. All the actions are highlighted and, and they can't really go wrong. So if we move to the next one, we'll look more into imagery. So you know, we're all different. We, do, we all have different levels of photography skills. I know mine are brutal. Um, so this would be, these are the kind of areas that I would always say invest. You know, if you invest once once in imagery, once in this, you can, you can get a stockpile of, of images and things that you can use throughout time. So if it ever is the case that, you know, you have that availability, definitely go for it. I've only ever seen positive things from um, gyms that have worked directly with professional photographers. Uh, if it's items for their store in Glowfox, you know, it just looks way slicker. Um, if it's within the studio itself, capturing real life um, imagery of your clients doing what you want those users to do themselves. Um, so hire a professional. If you have stock in imagery, choose wisely and follow about working with images guide and our knowledge base. So we do have a few different guides again in our KB. Um, and here's just a couple of uh, flat out do's and don'ts. Um, you know, you want to show your classes in action. There's no point in using images of other classes. You know, it's there's there's just no point. You show them what they'll be doing and they're much more likely to engage with it. Again, be authentic. If it's a if it's a yoga and meditation that you're, you're, you're doing again, like show, show that and don't, don't kind of veer from, from what it is. And then finally include your own branding. So this is actually one of our clients here and in a lot of their images, that's a place that you can, you know, keep refreshing your brand. If it's on the classes icons on the app, or if it's on images for, for booking specific classes, the more they see your brand, the more they're aware of it, the more they're going to be, you know, attached to it. Um, and then the downs are, are, are quite simple ones. Like, poor lighting, uh, blurred, blurred images, um, and then just those, those cheesy stock, uh, those photos, you know, don't, you don't, like, people aren't going to be doing this in a class. I don't, I think you said this before, it's, if, if I look that happy at the end of a class. It's, it's not working, like, it's, <laughs> it's step, I don't know if I've ever come out of a, of a fitness class 
being that happy and yeah no it just doesn't happen so I think on on that note I know Matt and I have laughed about this before but it's it's just so important to make sure that it's actual like it's actually reflective of what your you know class experience is like and you know if you are online and if you are you know managing that kind of hybrid schedule make sure that your images are reflective of that um I know that we've seen tons of great content where you know you see people absolutely exhausted after the class and that's kind of what you want you know, for client, your, your clients to see, because they know that that's what they're going to get if that's your whole kind of business model. So yeah, I just, I was laughing at that um, cheesy stock because I know I've never, I've never been that happy coming out of a fitness class. <laughs> I think there's one more where we kind of look at, yeah. So again, here, we're going to just to match your tone. So this is kind of just two examples of how you can, you can match that. So on the left, we kind of have authentic human and caring. So this is more of that yoga and Pilates relaxed atmosphere, you know, I've never been to any form of yoga where there's been EDM or loud music in the background and people dancing around. It is typically a, a personal practice and, and you do want that meditative element to it. So you want to see that reflected in the in the imagery that's used to kind of share it. And then the opposite, if you're more into that kind of, you know, hardcore uh, CrossFit and rope climbing, uh, as we have here, it's more of an energetic and strong and persistent tone of, you know, the person that's going to get up from the floor and, and touch the top of that rope. I know that's not going to be me right now, but maybe maybe in the future, uh, imagery, imagery like that might make me want to maybe one day complete it. One day. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I guess in, in, in really focusing on, let's say, ensuring that we were supporting you um, all with like as much, um, I guess, efficient and kind of effective content here. And um, what we did is we spoke with some of our customers who have a really strong uh, brand presence on on all elements on social media, just in general with our community and also just through using Glowbox. So, um, the squad are an Irish uh, company and um, they've uh, a massive you know, brand and uh, I guess a great following as a result. Uh, before they even brought in Glowfox, their entire, I guess, mission was to build that community and to introduce a really kind of, I guess, safe and fun environment for clients to work out. And that's exactly what they've done. And they've introduced Glowfox just to enhance and support that, that a little bit more. And um, they found by using the Glowfox member app, which is available on Goal Plans and Open, you also have the option to introduce your own standalone app. Um, that by using push notifications, they were able to, you know, uh, consistently kind of talk to their clients. Um, you know, by just sending a push notification, they were, you know, recommending to book in the classes the week before. If it was midweek, and let's say they haven't seen somebody book in, they're like, let's start booking in straight away, and so on. So again, they've been using um, the push notifications to ensure that they can continue to build and scale that community. Um, Uber Shape have uh, are another customer of ours who have also uh, gotten the standalone app, and they found that they've got like three hundred percent more supplements through the app. So that's using the store feature where it's kind of a click and collect option, and they found that they just because the majority of their bookings and all I guess activity or client activity was all on the app by having their store placed there, they were actually able to you know. Um, uh, to to increase their uh, sales massively obviously 300 percent isn't a funny um percentage to make fun of there so that is a massive kind of um uh, increase in their sales so again it's just making sure that you are using glow fox as much as possible to make sure that let's say everything that's about your brand so ensure that they everything that let's say uber shape are offering and recommending to um, their clients so that it's all available on the actual um, apps and it's all available on all the touch points that, that you can. So with that, you know, this does bring in some of our Glowfox features and products that are available to our, to our customers and that they can use to ensure that their brand is still consistent. So when you are on your member app, I know um, Matt has flagged this before, you have the option to ensure that your brand and um, colors are still kept consistent throughout the entire kind of booking platform. So that's possible possible with the member app and obviously the user experience is just that lip, a, a little bit better because you know they have the app there something to think about if it's the case that you're looking to really enhance your brand is the standalone app the reason why we say that is because 
your standalone app is going to have your own brand from let's say the very beginning journey of someone being a prospect for example you can send them a link to say oh yeah just find us on passion fitness app in either iStore and or excuse me um, app store and you'll be able to download us right there and then so again just by having and being able to quote kind of your own app um, it's going to be so much more powerful then that will just maintain your entire brand from the start to the end of their booking journey you know keeping your logo consistent if you're sending a push notification the push notification is going to come from your own studio name as opposed to just Glowfox if you're using the Glowfox member app so those are little things that may seem a little bit insignificant but because they're still coming from let's say you know passion fitness for example that's going to be constantly in my mind and again you're introducing that loyalty because all your communications are going to be encouraging getting them back in so again it's just by having that brand consistent and by you know communicating with your clients well you will be creating that loyalty and that trust there so you know just think about if it's a case that you know that you find that your brand is already quite strong maybe you haven't bought into the standalone app yet maybe now is the time to think about it because obviously you know with the member app there are a few additional steps to take um whenever you are uh, let's say trying to book into a class or register into the uh, actual dashboard so again little things like that just make a big change um, but regardless just ensuring that you have your brand colors your images all of your logos and everything in place you're definitely going to enhance your brand there the other areas that you can ensure you are getting your your brands kind of i guess known and um, kept consistent throughout any kind of platform you have is the website integration obviously these can be linked out from your social media bios and um, to you know your actual own website so again we will match kind of your brand colors there you also have the kiosk and the check-in kiosk all of that is going to fit and match your own brand colors as well and your brand guidelines so again it's just those little things that as soon as they come into the um to the location and they want to check in that it's going to have the same brand guideline there so it's like every single platform or touch point that that client is there you want to reinforce that brand and just these products are making sure that you have all of those opportunities to continue to uh, i guess improve your brand there um so with that that's very much i guess our main area about the glow fox dashboard and where you can ensure that your brand is kept consistent i'll pass you over to matt just to run through some of our other elements let's say on how you can ensure that your brand is consistent on other touch points and platforms yeah perfect so now that we've kind of had the first stage of you know we've got our stock imagery we've got all of our you know we've got our branding spot on our website sorted it's now it's the the case this is the most part that's all completed and once that's done it's it is done obviously over time we can tweak things and, and update it with new imagery and things like that but then it's the kind of the phase of engaging with your clients and you know one of the biggest areas we've seen massive increases in value in this time in particular is is the use of instagram um and being able to add booking links directly from instagram and promoting things so that your clients can just follow straight through from there to the booking platform of glowfox um so picking picking a username and sticking with it it's quite like your brand name so obviously you're going to want to get this as close to your actual brand name as possible um and you, then you just kind of want to stick to that you don't want to be again one of these brands that constantly changes and people have kind of built up a relationship and then see that it's changed and you know it's those kind of small things especially amongst the uh, the younger generations can make a massive difference and nowadays that's what they have access to um, so being con consistent with that as well with your logo and your bio across your channel so whether you're using facebook whether you're using push notifications whether you're emailing your clients again being consistent with that brand and community that you've created however you would speak to your clients in-house is typically the way that you'd look at the way that you're going to communicate with them on any other platforms um so again, follow your brand's voice if that's energetic, honest, and positive. Again, be, do the same thing on Instagram, like post like that, um, celebrate wins, whatever it is that you guys do and do well, like just keep pushing that. Um, and, and, and sharing that content embodies your brand. And that's what we're gonna kind of look at now again. We'll kind of take it back to a few of our clients that we believe have done this really well and really successfully. And um, so Bike Row Ski, you know, have grown from one studio in Dublin to quite, quite a few across the country now and potentially looking at, you know, taking that abroad I think is the next step um, and what I think is really cool here is their imagery on their Instagram and, and that they share online completely embodies who they are so you know smiling because the, uh, smiling at a workout again it, it might not be something you, you do during it but afterwards you can celebrate that your body's wrecked I'm pretty sure is the, the main way you're going to look at that um, 
but then like just just those simple things like no matter how bad your day is you know you're this is going to make you feel better and i know that that's how i am with fitness i'm not the most proactive about it but i know that once i go and do it that afterwards i feel better and i think that's what's really cool is they, they celebrate that and promote that on their instagram meaning for those that might be a little bit shyer they might see them celebrate a win or or something they did just that day that was you know they just went to a class just seeing that being posted can give everybody a massive boost um i think we can move on to the next one which is yeah uber shape and again it's that really honest and just you know real feeling you get from the images where you know 5kg down they're celebrating their members small little wins and sharing that online it's it's massively powerful and um, again starting these kind of challenges during a time now can be a way, great way to engage with your users and um, get them in get them committed to a six week or 10 week challenge or whatever it is during lockdown and then i have no doubt that you guys will do what you do best and and you know get them addicted to it and they'll be coming back then for another challenge or another course but as you can see these images are are, are real 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 life celebrations and that's why they work well um and yeah then just to kind of touch on this next point that we see here is that the, the uber shape again themselves so 90 percent more leads into members with the glow fox lead capture versus the normal contact form so for those of you that do use our sales and marketing tools you'll know of our lead capture form and the lead capture form is essentially a form that you can embed on your website that you know, you can capture the information that's important to you for a user really easily, name, email address, phone number. And what's really cool about this is you can link that to specific trials. Or, you know, in this case that you're looking at here, it's a request to call back. So some studios or gyms prefer a case if someone shares their interest and then they want to call them personally. So there's a number of different options. The lead capture form is definitely something that, you know, if you're using the sales and marketing and you don't have a lead capture form or you, you haven't updated it in a while, definitely get in touch with us. Um, you know, we can get that set up quite quickly. We have a team here that can help with it. Um, if it's that you've never heard of this, again, start a conversation with it. Uh, there's a lot of data that supports, you know, the, the great successes that these captures forms will have. It makes, I think it makes sign up for a trial. So if I was someone who just brand new came to your website, um, right now I might have to register on the Glowfox profile, go to the membership section, click on the membership that I want. And if I'm one of those kind of less patient people i might not want to do all of that whereas what we can do here is we can put a form that you create register your user that links straight to a trial membership whether it's paid or free is kind of up to you guys and then they can basically within 90 seconds go from looking at your website to being booking themselves into a class and on a trial membership you know so the power that that has you know you can attract people in very easily um, and it's definitely something that's worth it um so yeah do reach out to customer success at glowfox.com if that um, has raised any questions. Yeah, um, I love that piece, uh, um, Matt, because I think it's just, I think especially whenever so many people have worked so hard on their brand to, you know, reach out to clients, having the easiest way that you can capture them is just so key to that success of then scaling that brand even further. So that's definitely something to think about. Um, just a quick summary, because I know we have gone through quite a bit here. Um, I guess points to note whenever you are thinking about your brand or if you are you are having, let's say, that reflective moment in that, of like, am I doing this correctly? Do I need to revisit how I'm doing things? These are some things to think about. You know, again, remember your business goal, why you set up the business in the first place and are you keeping to your mission statement? You know, you don't want to be singing praises about one type of thing and then, you know, six months down the line, a year down the line, going off in a completely different route. That might be the way you want to go now, but definitely just remember, you know, why are you actually kind of setting your business up and making sure that you are being consistent to that. Um, uh, I guess with that as well, you know, once you know what that mission statement is, how are you going to do it? You know, how is your, I guess, your ethos and are you, are you being consistent to your ethos? So, you know, by making sure that your tone is consistent, your visual imagery, that they all match your core values and your reasons why you started the business, that's definitely going to build so much trust with your, you know, your member base, your existing member base, and also just from the public eye. So you're talking about any potential leads there. Um, so just making sure 
that that is a steady kind of consistent means whenever you are kind of communicating with all of your clients. And then finally, I mean, you have Glowfox, you're using it, make sure you're using it correctly, make sure, make sure that you are using it efficiently. You know, we are here to support you. So all of your Glowfox products, making sure that you have them as fully optimized as possible. Look at your web integration now after this webinar, make sure that you are, you know, that you have the correct colors in place, that you have the correct brand guidelines or that they, everything is matching your brand guidelines. And again, by just reinforcing that in every single touch point of your members or your potential leads journey, that's just going to help enforce your brand and the potentially scale and promote that going forward as well. So those are definitely some of, I guess, the take home messages to take from this um, uh, discussion here. Um, we will touch base on some of the questions um, now, if anybody does have any questions coming in. So um, I see here, uh, there's just a particular question just about the, the, the imagery. Um, so I know uh, we, we recommended Matt to invest, let's say a little bit in, you know, a professional photographer. Um, I know some customers of ours, they've done that before and they've like now used that really well where let's say they, they have their own like, stock images that they are reusing time and time again. And that can be ones that they, you know, save and they pull out every now and again just for like a campaign. We have some people who are like really creative and have made GIFs and have made certain, you know, different types of images that they're putting onto their website that they're using for their social media. So while it may be, you know, an expensive investment, it's definitely an investment and, and shop around definitely and make sure that you are, you know, connecting with the right people who have done this before, but that's still unique and that's still matching your own, you know, I guess, business and, and voice as well. You know, if your voice of your, or I guess if your mission statement doesn't match the visual imagery that that person is kind of suggesting then you know you definitely have the right to say no that's not my vibe and try and find someone who will suit and support your own kind of mission statement um so I, I think those are the main questions that have kind of come in so far i'm conscious of time so i don't want to keep um many people and um, as i'm sure you are all quite busy um but if it's the case that you do want to learn a little bit more about let's say any of this um content here i know matt and i are quite visual learners so generally speaking webinars are where we kind of learn the most and um, from some of our other kind of partners um but definitely if it's the case that you'd like to learn a bit more about some of this content an awful lot of this was kind of pulled from um, our marketing team who have already kind of created these uh, articles and I guess on a more expansive note on our blogs. So definitely do reach out and kind of if you don't know where our blogs are, they are on our website. Um, you can also review them, let's say, on, on our LinkedIn profiles as well, where we kind of post, uh, publish content quite regularly there. So also on our knowledge base, we have tons of content there. So definitely do make sure that you check out of that um, if it's the case that you want to learn a little bit more. And obviously we have tons of other content there on SMS retention and so on. All of those different areas that let's say that you can use to enhance your brand, ensure that you're sticking with it a little bit more. So those are the main areas that um, that I think are going to support you. If it's the case as, as well that you do have any questions, Matt and I are here. And by, by, by no means do we, whenever we say like contact customer success that we're just saying it, we actually mean it so please do reach out to us even if it's the case that you feel that you are acing your brand and that your brand is spot on definitely do reach out to us we have uh, a section on our knowledge base that's called customer stories um where we go and speak to our customers to see how they're using it so if it's the case that you think that you'd be a good fit for that please do let us know we'd be really interested to hear how you're using glow fox and how you're using it to you know support and scale your brand um and lastly, if it's the case that you have enjoyed this webinar and you'd like to leave us a positive review on G2 Crowd, we would be massively appreciated of that. Uh, the link is there, but of course, do reach out to us if you'd like to get a direct link and we'd be more than happy to send that on to you. So with that, um, we will leave you all be. We hope you have a great day or evening. I know it's pretty dark here where I am, so it, it's quite clear it's the evening time. Um, but listen, I hope everyone stays safe and takes care and we're looking forward to our next webinar and we'll speak to you then. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.